The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at broadway-limited.com. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for September 2023. I'm your host, Ken Patterson. And this month, we've got a really good show in that we look at some beautiful locomotives from Broadway Limited. We've got some F units this month, an N scale that I photographed outside, and also some T1 locomotives absolutely gorgeous streamlined locomotives in n scale with that paragon 4 sound and all the bells and whistles now that seem to be normal in n scale also this month we finish part three of the layout construction segment where we're building this ho scale ho narrow gauge scale layout that i call the blackstone layout it's a size layout that'll fit in any man cave it's like eight feet by three and a half feet wide, and it's got a bit of a dog bone curve to it. It's just a beautiful layout in part three of this month's layout construction. Also, the wonderful folks from Bachman Industry stop by. We've got Larry Harrington that shows us some of the new products for this month, and it's absolutely always a treat to hear what they are coming out with new before everybody else on the What's Neat show. Also, be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video show podcast that we record down here in the studios every Saturday night, keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby with special guests and our wonderful regular podcast crew. It's a great show to keep everybody updated on this, the best hobby in the world. And so with that, let's continue on with the rest of this September 2023 What's Neat. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got to share with you some beautiful models that I am shooting this afternoon out on this gorgeous, absolutely fantastic day with cool weather. Starting out, these are all again N-scale models from Broadway Limited. And I am shooting these beautiful streamlined T1 locomotives that the Pennsylvania Railroad had manufactured. They were produced around 1942 and they're absolutely exquisite. Now these are not articulated locomotives. These in fact have a rigid frame on them, which gave them excellent pulling power. And the streamline effect on these is absolutely beautiful. Broadway Limited makes this model in five different road numbers and also in an undecorated sample you can purchase. Also, they make three fantasy paint schemes, of which I have one of them here, this beautiful silver locomotive with the red stripe. They also make it in brown, a beautiful brown pencil paint scheme, and also in green, a very dark green. They've got extraordinary detail on them, just all the piping, all the pumps, everything is there to be had. These come with Paragon 4 sound, They've come with capacitance, capacitors built in so they don't stall on dirty track. They're absolutely just gorgeous models. They've got plastic exteriors with all the full detail on them, but the interior is solid die cast. So you've got tons of pulling power with these units. They track really well on all codes of track, code 70, code 55, N scale track. 
They're absolutely beautiful in that you can find these on the Broadway Limited website, which is a new and improved website. They're absolutely beautiful models, and I wanted to share them with you because, again, they put so much work into the fidelity of these N-scale models. I mean, they are absolutely beautiful. Also today, I'm shooting some F3s, F-units. I've got them in Missouri Pacific, and I also have them in the Frisco paint scheme. Now, these models also have Paragon 4 sound. The A units are powered. The B units are dummy units. These are available in 14 different paint schemes that you can find on their website. They've got the lighting effects in them. And also, all of these models that I'm showing you today are available in their Stealth series. So that if you choose, you can put your own decoder in them, either sound or non-sound, and run them on, their, on the layout. They'll run on DC, a regular DC power pack, right out of the box. But again, if you put your own decoder in it of your choice, your sound system of your choice, you can again run these on your layout with full DCC and everything else that we're so used to in this hobby. It's absolutely amazing, again, the fidelity that the manufacturers are able to make in N-Scale. And Broadway Limited has done an absolutely fantastic job on these. Paragon Sound sound system matches the prototype, whereas they've recorded prototype sounds of the various units so that they match the models exactly. I thought they were so exquisite. I really wanted to share them with you as I'm doing this photo shoot today. Just a beautiful day with a lot of beautiful models. Check them out at the Broadway Limited website and or you can purchase them at Lombard Hobbies up in Lombard, Illinois. Thank you very much, the folks that help us support this show. And with that, that is this segment for what's neat. I've put the dirt down and now I'm putting down very fine creek stone for the ballast. Just like we did to the other side when we finished the other side. I'll put down some ballast over here in the industry, just a little bit of rock to hold the ties. You know what I'm doing though? I'm simply taking a one inch brush. Very gently just dusting off the ties on top. I'm spreading out the ballast and filling in the blank spots in the middle between the tracks. By laying the brush down on its side, it gives me a real smooth kind of a drag, as if you're using a broom. And then for the brushing of the ties, I want the ends of the brush. Where I've put a lot of grass and weeds in this yard with that static grass. Kind of cover up these tracks a little bit. Just like that. Okay, I've applied the ballast and brushed it in. I dropped in just a little bit more Woodland Scenics Green here. I use a static gun afterwards when this is wet and drop in some dry dead grass. I want to point out that I've got these covered up. The switch points are cleaned out with a brush and covered out so that I shouldn't have any glue problems uh, messing up the switches, which truly Woodland Scenics uh, scenic Cement is permanent stuff. You don't want to get that in your switch points. So everything's ready to get glued. Here comes the glue.
Okay, so that's it. Everything's been glued. The switches are protected. No glue on them. All the track points. I can just put a little drop of water or two in there to make sure that there's no glue setting up around the switch points when I pull off the tape. Everything's ready to just dry now. I'm ready to put the oak sides on with this finished and finish the turntable area. Okay, the scene is still wet. I'm putting a nail in the scene because I forgot to talk about static grass. So here's our static grass gun. It's on and I'm going to put some dead grass in this yard. I'm grounded by the nail and the cord. And here she comes. This is coming out straight, standing up straight. Look at that. Isn't that just wonderful how that works? That's how you apply static grass. Now that I've finished the top electronics and the scenery and the track, I'm ready to start thinking about putting the wood sides on this. Now in order to attach, in order to attach the oak around this curvature, I'm going to put a lot of these small boards into the foam, into the groove that we carved. I've discovered I really like this Gorilla Glue for this. So I'll dip the piece of wood in a bowl of water. I'm going to spray the channel where the board's going to go with a little bit of water to wet it. I'm going to put this glue on the top, it's very, not thick, but very thin, even, complete coverage, but thin. And this glue is going to expand about four times its own size without pushing out the blocks. It does not push out the blocks. And then we'll take and wipe it off the excess and just keep working all the way around the diorama. The same way, just take the small pieces of wood and drip them in the water. Make sure everything's wet so that the glue is activated by the moisture. Take the part and put it in here. And by the time I get 30 of these blocks going all around, around this corner, it's going to be very strong surface for me to staple the plywood into. So I'm not just depending upon glue on the curvature that I, I really don't think that would hold because this plywood will be under a little bit of pressure. So that's the way we're going to do that. What I'm doing is I'm using a shore form to round the edges of the wood and to get off the excess uh, polyurethane glue. Alright, let's wrap this puppy in wood. My wood is wet. are. So as long as I put the gun right here, I'll nail that board. Perfect. All the way around. This way. I'm going to put this block wood right here. And I'm going to grab in my staples. Put this puppy in. staple right there. That's 
working beautifully. Keep working my way all the way around here. I didn't show you that on the video in the last one. I went back and glued it. I'm putting some water glue on here. Since the whole situation's wet, this water glue is perfect because it expands about four times. So it's going to fill all the gaps in here. I like that idea a lot. expensive glue but wherever that touches that's going to hold like a rock What I'm doing now is I'm drilling out the uh, pilot holes for the uh, switches on the side. Okay, so after you saw me drill the holes for the switches with the drill press, <clears throat> what I'll do is I'll, I'll draw some lines around here, and I'll carve this, and I'll make this just perfect, all the circles just right. I'll draw it first. But right now this board is cut exactly to length. It's very, very tight now, but when this piece gets sandwiched in, it's going to just be perfect. So everything's just right. I just need to finish off the woodwork around the edges, and then I'll glue this piece in next. And that'll finish the woodwork all the way around. And then what we'll do is we'll take a um, a trimmer, and we'll run the bead, the trimmer along the edge here with a wheel on it, 
and that'll cut all the topography in the wood all the way around the diorama. Okay, first I want to draw the lines for the top two circles where they're going to match. It'll give me a nice top and round edges. I need to go lower down here. Better length of that eraser. So that's going to put me down right here. And I know the plexiglass is there for that, so I'm going to match up a circle the same size I drilled it out. I'm going to bring it down to there, to that line I just drew. Which puts me right here. Double check my work. That's good. I'm going to draw my circle right there. I'm going to do the same on the other side. I just want to take that nice curved edge we have and take advantage of it and keep doing it. Got a lot to play with here too. Exactly the eraser. Pull away the wood. I can see the height of the eraser is right, right there. I'm using my pencil as my visual measuring guide. And it's working. Now I'm just going to drop this circle straight down, and I won't use the drill press to cut this. I'm going to put this on the small table saw, jigsaw, the uh, scroll saw, and cut it out that way. And I should just match up the bottom ones, and it should just be perfect. And when I pull this wood off, I'm just going to double check and make sure I've got the plexiglass for this. I'm sure I've got the real estate underneath this in black plexiglass where it'll cover that whole nice oval that we've got going. Just square up these edges here. I use my triangle for that. Uh, it's, you know, just, it's, it's this little bitty measuring, this little bitty uh, double checking of your work that's going to make this part look really pretty, really nice, really professional. Not that it has to, but why not, right? Okay, I'm lining this one up. My circle diameter is one and a half inches. That's the same size uh, cutting bit that we used a little while ago to cut these circles. This one's just about drawn perfect. Everything looks good on this one. So that's two finished. Okay, I've got all my lines drawn. If I drew my lines right, this should be easy. It should match up. All right, I'm just going to sand this piece that we cut right before before I put it in. I want to just get a nice smooth edge on this one because I don't think my sander will do an inside curve like this once it's installed. Alright, so if I cut everything right this will fit just in here just right without any nails right now. We'll just curve right in there. There she goes. That's what I want to hear. There you go. That's flush, and when these all get stapled in, you have your nice curvature that'll even out. Switches line up, look at that. Ready to go. It's a black stain, here we come. Okay, I've moved the layout outside now, and what I'm gonna do is take this laminate trimmer, which has got a ball bearing on it, and it's gonna just simply trim and cut right along the edge of the diorama so that I can get all the contours because as you can see the plywood's straight we got a, a deep gorge where the bridge is for example so just follow this all the way around and it, and it will work the contours and make them just beautiful on the edges Alright, you can see why we took it outside for that process. But what you end up with is a perfectly nice contour, jaggedy, I'll smooth it out with some sandpaper. It's just going to be a really nice uh, 
way to finish off the edge of the wood. I really don't know any other better way to do it than to do it this way, on, especially on the round curves. Because to do this with a jigsaw ahead of time would have been an impossibility. It just, it would have been very difficult. It's much easier to bend the wood, put it in place, and then go ahead and take the uh, trimmer and trim the edges like we've just done. Thing I want to do is I want to sand the diorama. So I'm going to sand all the way around the edges and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to fill these holes with a little bit of wood putty. I'm going to sand over that. Final sanding and it'll be time to put some black stain on this thing. Okay, it's about six hours later and I've applied my first coat of black stain to this and it's already dried. You need a second coat of this mixture. What I do is I take two bottles of uh, black, engine black, uh, flocal paint and then I dump it into uh, the uh, ebony stain from Minwax, oil-based stain. And it gives you a real rich black coverage. But it still has always taken two coats on every diorama. This first coat, if I didn't coat it, it would probably come out sort of a golden color, black and golden. But I want this whole diorama to be completely black. So other than that, this is, this is coming out very well. I'm going to spray just a little bit of paint on top, some uh, camouflage brown from Rust-Oleum, just to weather up the yard area. The gravel is just, just too bright. I want to weather that up just a bit. So one coat of black and just a little weathering while this thing is outside for the next hour. Look at that rich black color right there. That's what I'm looking for. After this gets hit with three coats of high gloss, it'll just, it'll have that richness, that dark depth. That's what I want this to have. Just a very professional finish on the outside. The small area around the switches I did with a very fine number three uh, paintbrush. Just, just real fine work. Take your time. Don't get any paint on the place glass. We'll come back and follow up the edges with dirt and finish off the final edges after the wood has been completely polyurethane. The layout will be the last part to get finished. In other words, after the wood. The wood right now takes precedence against for everything for, for the finish right now. So if we get a little bit of dark stain or something like that on the scenery, that's okay. Look at how beautiful this is going to look. This is taking this black real nice. The second coat is just magic. What I'm doing now is I'm putting on the first coat of semi-gloss Minwax polyurethane. And I'm going to put on three coats of this. I'm going to put on the first two coats and then I'm going to sand real fine with some 2000 grit sandpaper and some water and then I'll put on a third coat which will leave this sides just a glass finish not shiny but the wood grain will show up real nice and that's just the effect that I want I want that dark professional effect this is going to look beautiful like a piece of furniture Okay, so coat one of polyurethane is on, and now I'm putting on the second coat.
What I'm doing is I'm putting water in the wood now. I've got two coats of polyurethane on it. And now it's time to sand this with some 1,000, 1,500 grit uh, sandpaper. And what this will do is get off any rough spots. So when you put your hand on this, on the third coat, it will be glass smooth. So this is just a real important step. A little bit of water. And just go over the woodwork real smooth and slow. I put tape around the around the edges, around the whole edge of the entire layout right now. And I'm putting down dirt. I'm putting down dirt around the edges and a little ground foam and rock just to finish off the edge, but not mar or cover up the uh, edge of the plywood, the beautiful black wood. And so that ends part three of this layout construction segment on What's Neat. In a future episode of What's Neat, we will continue on with the last segment of this part four, which we will then wrap up and conclude this amazing, amazing man size layout that fits in any spot, any man cave, any part of your basement. Not too big, not too small, just the right size with a lot of neat detail on it. And so with that, that ends this segment of layout construction for what's neat. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Larry Harrington from Bachman Industries in beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Larry, welcome to the show. How are you today? I'm doing great, Ken. How are you? It's been a while. It's been a couple of months since I've been on your show. So we've been kind of rotating duties at the Bachman company here. And uh, so everybody gets a chance to, to uh, speak. We've had Doug and Tyler and uh, Matt on the show. And uh, it's my turn again. So getting we're really busy right now. This time of year is uh, NMRA prep time. So everybody, it's like Christmas. You know, everybody's uh, happy to see all the new products. We are... Um, getting ready to go. This will air after NMRA, but we, and I do have one thing that I'll talk about, but for most of the part, we'll keep it a surprise until uh, next month. Awesome. So, so uh, first thing, I've, um, how you been, by the way? Everything's good here. We're keeping up with show production. We had an absolutely awesome summer this summer and a lot of activities. We had that RPM meet in St. Louis, uh, obviously the NMRA show in Texas. There's just, the hobby is just it's just like like Lionel Strang used to say, we're all going to be covered in hobby goo because it's doing so well. It's just going to explode. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, we've seen you know some growth over the last couple of years. Of, uh, one of the nice side effects of COVID was that people went back to their hobby and uh, went in their basements and expanded their layout and um, did all kinds of things. And I think we actually grew the hobby during that time, um, which it's been you know steady but uh this i think was a pretty big spike for all of, all the manufacturers out there so absolutely true good thing so um one of the first things i want to show you is that these are in stock now uh is our on 30 um open side open top excursion car it's got seats inside that's what happens with a lot of the narrow gauge railroads they become they become tourist railroads and so they convert we've had our covered uh excursion car in the, in the past row in 30 but we decided there's also a lot of open top cars out there no top cars uh and uh, this one's cumbers and toltec get my fingers out of the way so you can see a little bit better very cool um, it comes in uh cumbers and toltec durango and silverton um, east broad top and white pass and yukon and i have uh also i have the uh white pass and yukon model here very nice nice color oh thanks it's got the 
painted inside there with the seats so it's ready to stick your o gauge o scale figures in there and uh haul them around your layout that'll be amazing and a lot of people will do just that yeah exactly so it's a nice little addition and um we uh also like i said we have those in four road names um so you can you know use them for a good number of existing uh scenic railroads out there so um like i said we we've been getting ready for nmra so my samples to show of the, are kind of limited because everything's already packed up and on its way to the show but it did snag a few things before um so this is our first test shot of um n scale sd40-2 very nice and some of your eagle-eyed people out there might notice that this one doesn't have a dynamic brake and all the road names we uh, announced have dynamic brakes. So we, we are trying to make our models a little more flexible um, in N scale and all of our scales, make them in, with both dynamic brake and non-dynamic brake options. Um, they sent us the test sample for the one we're not doing first. So um, this will be available in four road names with dynamic brakes. It'll be Santa Fe, um, CSX, the Norfolk Southern and Union Pacific. Nice. Yeah. So um, it will have full DCC sound on board. Um, it'll be Tsunami 2, I believe. Well, let me double check. No, it's Economic, excuse me. I'm sorry. Um, it's, a, it's a soundtrack Economic. So that's, uh, that'll be out sometime this year. Um, this is something that hasn't been announced yet, but will be by the time this airs. Sure. We, we are going to do the uh, very successful with their uh, HO chemical tank cars. So we're doing it in N scale as well. And this will also feature the two different size domes. I don't know if it shows up there on the camera. I'll get as close as I can. It does. Okay, there's the small dome. And then this one is the uh, large dome option. Nice. So got a lot of nice detail on the braking on the bottom and um, our easy mate couplers as well this will these will be coming in four road names as well um we're doing two of the road names that we did in ho uh, diamond chemicals and hooker chemicals okay uh, but we'll also i don't know if this will show up on the screen we're also doing pen salt and angle guard um let's see if they can, is it too much of a glare there on the screen there it is just right perfect okay those are the four that we'll be doing okay so you'll see that in the nmra announcements so um it's one thing i want to remind everybody we we send out a newsletter every week um, to all of our subscribers on our email list um, we also do things on facebook and instagram as well but to get that weekly newsletter you got to sign up for our email list so that'll tell you what's coming what just came in stock um you know anything new happening at Bachman um and you know good good place to get all your first-hand information from from us absolutely um, true I've seen your Facebook page you guys have been putting a lot of videos on there as well and photographs yeah uh, Matt Matt Stern who was on the show earlier he's our communications manager he does an awesome job with videos uh we just um rehabbed one of our older end scale layouts so we'll probably be using that for uh, some more videos, and we we're doing, we have another end scale. We're in, we're in summertime rehab layout rehab mode right now, so we're working on a second layout as well to uh, give him a variety of uh, scenic uh, backgrounds for his uh, videos and um, and photography as well. So absolutely true. That's that's great. I've still got an end scale layout down here that uh, I started two and a half years ago. Actually, it's been three years now, and I need to finish that project as well. N scale, I the one thing that this summer brought with a lot of the manufacturers that help us support the hobby is there's been a lot of new N scale models out there. Well, we'll have some more to announce at NMRA. I just can't uh, give. We don't have everything prepared for the uh, or right before the uh, so the the brochure hasn't been printed yet. And, um, so, when, if I had more information for you at this time, I would give it to you, but. Um, we'll have that available at, at, in Texas okay. and also will be available online, um, I think, the first day of the, the show, the National Train Show, not the first day of the convention. We'll do, we always put it on the, right before the public um, 
entrance time at uh, at the show. I think that's 12 o'clock on, um, well, it's be 11 o'clock Eastern time. So okay, um, you'll, have, you'll have that up. Just click on our um, catalogs and brochures link on our website, and you'll uh, be able to view view the uh, brochure. Very cool, Larry. It sounds like a lot of neat stuff is coming out. I can't wait to see further what comes out. This is the best hobby in the world, and you guys really, really add to it for everybody with all the products that you do make. Well, thanks a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, been in the hobby for a long time, and it's always fun to, to bring joy to other people. So, Rock and roll. Is that it for today? That's it for today, yep. And so with that said, thank you very much, Larry, for being on the What's Neat show. And that ends this segment for What's Neat. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. And by Broadway Limited Imports, the cutting-edge leader in model trains. Check out their website at Broadway-Limited.com. Bachman Trains, now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com. Thank you.